Hi guys, I am Khushbu and welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. In this video, we will see the question n array tree pre-order traversal. Given the root of an n array tree, return the pre-order traversal of its nodes values. Let's see what are the different things that are given to us in the node class. We are given a value and we are given the list of nodes of children. So for the node 1, the children's would be 2, 3, 4, 5. Now for 3, the children would be 6 and 7. For 7, it would be 11 and for 11, it would be 14 and so on. So these are given to us as list of node instead of left and right as we are having in our binary trees. So now how can we get the pre-order traversal of this kind of a tree where we can have more than two children for a node? Let's see that in detail and then we'll go into coding part. We already know how to find out the pre-order traversal for a binary tree which has at most two children. So in that case, we can write the pre-order as root left and right. Over here, we have a list of children at a particular level. So our pre-order traversal would change to root, then the child and then the sibling of that child. And the siblings are the list of children for that particular root node or the node. Now let's go ahead and see how we can get the pre-order traversal for this tree. First, we'll be on root and we'll process the root. Then we'll move to its child and then we'll process all the other siblings for that particular child node. Now we have three children for node one and we have two children for node three. So how do we process these? While we are going to the child, we'll take the first node and then we'll process the children of that particular node. And so this becomes the root and then this becomes its children. And so we go to its child and process this five. And then as this five does not have any children, we are going to process the sibling nodes. And since it has only one sibling, that is six, we process that. And then we move upwards as this six also does not have any child node. Now, as we move to the next sibling of this three, we get two, which has no child. And so we process this node two and then move to the next sibling. Again, four has no child and so we just process four. And now this becomes our pre-order traversal for the nary tree shown here. Now, one thing that is to notice is that we are going to process the root and then we are going to process each and every child of that particular node in the same way as we have processed the root. So, the recursive call becomes very easy that first we need to process the root and then again recursively call the pre-order traversal on each of its child node which would be given to us in a list form. Now let's go and quickly code this approach out and then we'll be looking at the iterative approach for this problem. So over here firstly we'll write that if root is null we can simply return a empty list. So let's take a list. and we can simply return this list. If that is not the case, we need to call a helper method or a recursive method with root node in it. And then finally, we can return the result list. In this pre-order helper method, we'll be adding our traversal nodes into this result. So let's quickly write the helper method. In this helper method, we'll first check whether this particular node has children node or not. If there are no children, we can just return at this particular step or else we can process this node and then go on to processing the children. So for processing the node, we are going to add this value into the result. And then for each child node, we'll again call this method recursively and that's it. So now let's try and run this code for all the sample test cases and we are getting a perfect result. Let's submit this and it got submitted. The time complexity over here is O of n that is the number of nodes and the space complexity would be for this recursive stack which would be 
the maximum of the height of the tree that we have. Now that we have seen the recursive solution, let's go and see the iterative one because we are also given a follow up in this question that recursive solution is trivial. Can you do it iteratively? So let's go and see that one. Now in the iterative one, we would be using stack as we do it in iterative binary tree traversal. If you are not aware how iterative traversal works in case of binary tree, I would suggest you to click the link in the top or in the description and take a look into it because if you understand that, this would also be much easier for you to understand. So over here, I have taken a stack and I'll be starting with putting the root node in it. After putting the root node, I'll now iterate while the stack is not empty. And while the stack is not empty, I'll pop this element out and now I'll have to process all the nodes that are below this level. So we have these three children, but what we want is we want this three node to get processed first. And so this needs to be in the top. And that's the reason why we need to put this particular child node list in the reverse order in our stack. So four will go in the stack first, then two and then three. Now again, we'll pop a node out and process its children. So now three has two children, five and six, which we would be adding into the stack in the reverse order, which goes like this because we want five in the top as we are going to process the first child first. Now we again pop this element 5 and since it does not have any child we process it by adding it into our result and then moving ahead. Again as 6 does not have any child node we are going to process the 6 and move ahead. Now that you can see that the child for this 3 that is the first child for the root node is done and so we are moving to the next sibling of this node 3 which is 2. Again as 2 does not have any child we are not going to add anything in the stack but process 2. Similar with 4. And now as stack becomes empty this becomes our resultant pre-order reversal for the nre tree which is shown over here. So one thing that we need to keep in mind while doing a pre-order reversal on this tree is that we are going to use a stack and while adding the child node, we are going to add it in the reverse order. Keeping these two things in mind, let's go ahead and code it out. We'll just remove this and we'll remove this method. Over here, I'll have to take a stack. So I can either take a stack or I can take a DQ. So I'll be taking a stack and in the stack, I'll add root node. After I have this root node, I'll take while stack is not empty. I'll perform the actions I was doing in the example we saw. So I'll pop a node from the stack and take it into a current node. And now I need to put every child for this particular node in the reverse order in the stack and add this current into my result. So let's first process this node and then we'll go to its children. So I am starting from the last child and I'll go till the first one. In this for loop, what I am doing effectively is pushing the children in reverse order. So over here, I've started from the last index and I'll put that child first into the stack. So we'll do current.children.getofi. So this would get the ith child, which is the last child, then decrement the counter and at the end put the first child into the stack that is in the reverse order. So let's run this and it gives a perfect result. Let's submit this and it got submitted. The time complexity for this particular approach still remains the same. That is, we'll need to traverse on each and every node once. So it becomes O of n. But the space complexity over here could also go to O of n if it is a skewed tree. And the same applies to recursive approach also. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it and I'll see you in another one. So till then, keep learning, keep coding. Mm -hmm.